guys, I'm Ellie. Welcome to my channel. This is my first video, um, so I really hope you guys like it. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, my ticket buying experience for BTS. Um, I got two GA tickets to the LA show on Saturday, and I got two P1 seated tickets to the Hamilton show on Saturday. So let me know down below if I'll see you there. So I'm going to talk about Axis, Ticketmaster, and third-party buying websites. So I'm going to start with Axis because that was the first one I used to buy the LA tickets. Now, the way Axis works is um, it puts you into this waiting room 30 minutes prior and you want to make sure you get into that waiting room as soon as you possibly can because um, sometimes it glitches or it closes or like it won't let you in. So just make sure you're on top of that. Um, and so while you're in the waiting room, it's going to assign you a random number in line. Now that number can range anywhere from first in line to like 3,000th in line. Like it, it's all random. It doesn't matter where you are or your, what your device is. It's all random. Um, and since it's random, that means that the more devices you have, the more likely a chance um, that your number in line is going to be higher. So you want to make sure you have lots of devices. Now, I really went overboard on my devices, and I had a whole computer lab um, available to me, and I had like my laptop, my friend's laptop, and then my sister at home with all of our stuff, and then my friend. So I'm going to insert a short clip. It's a really terrible clip. I'm sorry. I didn't expect to be making this video. Um, but I'll insert that clip of like my setup um, while I was in the waiting room. So you're in the waiting room, and when the time hits, your devices are automatically going to refresh. You do not want to refresh your screen yourself because that's going to change your number in line. And your number could go from being like first or second in line to being like last. So you do not want to refresh. Just trust and like hold on to your hope and then pray to the gods. Um, so, um, and then at that point, it's just a waiting game. And so you're going to see a little man like across your screen, like running and like moving across this bar. And all your devices and all your tabs that you have open are going to be running at like different speeds. Um, that's just because of your spot in line that the device was assigned. Um, so some of mine were already almost done and some of mine were like barely starting. So it really all depends. And like out of all my like 24, 25 waiting line spots I had, only two of mine made it through before tickets sold out. So it's like, it's hard, but like you got to trust and you just got to have devices, devices, devices. Um, so my friend who wasn't into K-pop at all, hers actually got in first and she was just like, oh, I'll just click GA and she ended up getting two J tickets. I was shocked because we, um, we were 10 minutes into it already and so I thought they were going to be sold out. But because the way Access works, it like spreads it out so that it won't like crash on you because, because of the, the line system they have in the waiting room. And so she bought those tickets and she, I got the confirmation email and I was already in tears. And then one of my computers loaded and we were about 15 minutes into the sale and I clicked GA just out of curiosity and I ended up pulling two more GA tickets. Um, but like I didn't need them so I re-released them back for someone else and I wanted to see if P1 reserved were available just in case something happened and I couldn't end up doing GA. Um, they were sold out. And I clicked B2, sold out, P3, sold out. Like all of them were sold out. So like one of my other tips is just like, once you get the tickets that you clicked, like you keep them because like by the time you go back and try to pull more, like their odds are they're gonna be gone. Um, so you really gotta just take your chance and go for it. You can always sell them and buy better ones um, or trade, but just really just keep it and you just gotta go with it. Um, so yeah, that's basically my access experience. So now I'm gonna talk about Ticketmaster. So for Ticketmaster, I used Ticketmaster for my Hamilton show in Canada. Um, this one was a little bit of a different story because it was a little less successful and it was a little more chaotic. Um, I personally like Access more just because it is more random and I think it's more fair and Ticketmaster is all about who has the fastest Wi-Fi or the best device and a lot of people don't have access to really high speed devices um, or like really good Wi-Fi. So Ticketmaster is kind of unfair in that aspect. So for Ticketmaster, again, like the best decision is to have a lot of devices, but you want to balance devices with Wi-Fi. So like if you have too many devices on your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi might slow down. Um, but if you have too few devices, maybe you won't get the tickets that you want. So it's really a balancing game. Um, I had eight devices for this, so a lot less than I had for LA just because of that Wi-Fi balance I had to think about. Um, and so the time came, the timer ran out, and Ticketmaster also refreshes your screen for you. So you do not want to 
um, refresh it. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, refresh it five seconds before or two seconds before, but I found personally that the best is just not refresh it at all. Um, so we got in and it said like searching for your tickets and verifying and it took like an hour to get just one ticket and I needed two. Um, so, so I ended up getting one P1 ticket and I needed another one. So I made the decision to go check out some third party sites. And so that's what I'm talking about next is the third party sites. Um, so a lot of people I know have been posting a lot of stuff on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook on like selling or trading tickets. Um, personally, I don't think that's a great decision or an educated decision just because it's really easy to falsify information. Like even if they have a screenshot of the tickets, they could have easily gotten that from someone else. Um, I just, the best bet is to buy from like verified companies. Like, and when I say verified companies, I mean places like StubHub, Ticketmaster, Ticketmaster, like Resale, um, Vivid Seats, SeatGeek, places like that who have like policies. Um, I bought from StubHub because I feel most comfortable with it. I know that StubHub has a policy where it's 100% guaranteed that the tickets are real, the tickets are authentic. Um, so when you show up to the venue, if your tickets for some reason don't work or like are fake, they will give you a refund and or they will find you seats that are better or the same. So I feel like I felt safe buying from them because of that. And another thing to remember guys is that these are multi-million dollar companies. Like they want their tickets to be real. Like they want to keep their reviews strong. So like definitely buy from them because like, like yeah, it might cost a little more, but like in the long run, it's going to be safer for you and like buyers everywhere. And I ended up finding a P1 ticket for $300, which is insane. I'm so lucky I managed to find this diamond in a rough. Um, so that was great. So now I'm going with my friend and we're going to have a good time. Um, let me know if you guys are going to either of those shows. I will see you guys there. So I think that covers for like the tips that I want to share with you guys and like my experience and how it worked for me. Um, if you have questions, please, please, please feel free to comment them down below. I really will try to respond to them as fast as I can with the most information I can. Maybe I'll even make a second video if there's enough questions. Um, good luck to everyone buying tickets out there. I know that more tour dates are coming and I hope this helped you guys. Um, again, I'm Ellie. Welcome to my channel and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Bye guys.